Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be multiplied on you, unto you today. Welcome in Jesus' name. Boy, look at how many people are here today. This is amazing. Praise God. Okay, so if you've never been to Chapel of Windmill Village before, raise your hand. All right, we have one. Okay, that's Christine Cooey. Christine is from Tamiami. She just moved back, officially kind of, from Iowa. So she's a longtime uh, resident at Tamiami, but here today, welcome in Jesus' name. And that's a, that's a Tamiami table back there. The Wellmans are there and Sharon's there. Wellmans, how much longer are you here? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. All right. Well, Godspeed to you as you go back. Yeah, to Indiana. And Bob and Joyce Kanake are, are here. Nice to have you here today. They're from Iowa, but actually they're from Tamiami, right across the street from Christine. So, very good. Let's see who else. And Bill and Amy are here, all the way from the East Coast. Welcome in Jesus' name. Great. Clarence is in the front row so he doesn't get in trouble, right? <laughs> <laughs> Louie, nice to have you here today. Larry, nice to have you. Gordon and Cheryl. All right, welcome. All that, look at that crew over there. I always get a kick out of that. It's, you have to have, uh, wait a minute. S, 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 oh, D, I guess it's okay. <laughs> Sherry, Stella, Shelly, and Darlene. I guess it's okay. <laughs> That's right. Nice to have you here, Peggy, Donna, and Donna, and John. All right, did I miss any? Oh, obviously, Larry and Angie, we got to have you here. Lily's back there. Thank you, Willie, for being here today, and my family's here. My wife is not here today. She is at a woman's retreat, so she'll be, she'll be here next week. All right, so I have a question for you. Did everybody get a bulletin, by the way? Okay, so there's a question on the bulletin uh, on the front page. I'm going to ask people to answer the question, okay? You see the question there? Anybody want to volunteer an answer? Okay, I'm going to get you on. T on. <laughs> that we're all entwined? We're all entwined, okay. Connected. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, Donna. We're all entwined in the circle of life. We're all entwined in the circle of life, okay. Yes, Amy. Uh, the circle is God, head, and then the other three parts are three parts of the Trinity. Okay, that's good. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Oh, Lily, just a minute. The Father, the Son, and the oh, Holy Spirit. Say it again so they don't hear you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, good. Anybody else? Louie, what do you think? I think you have to be in peace with yourself before you can be in peace with the Lord. Okay, that's good. Anybody else? Are you thinking? Yeah. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and then the ring is the eternity. Eternity. So God is eternal? Yes. All right. Anybody else? When I asked Larry and Angie, I showed that to them. They, th they said, did you say Star Trek? That was a thing from Star Trek? <laughs> no, it wasn't Star Trek. <laughs> the Force? No. All right. All right. Uh, can we understand the Trinity? No, but we believe it, don't we? Amen. Right. I always tell the story about the fact that um, if you have a Jehovah's Witness come to your house, and they'll say, well, you know the word Trinity isn't in the Bible, meaning like all of a sudden it's going to be some shock, you know, and then, and then they'll, they'll try to dissuade you from believing in the Trinity. So when they come to my house, I say to them, well, you know the word Trinity isn't in the Bible. But the idea of the Trinity, Trinity is all over the Bible. So you can't disprove it just because the word isn't there. Mankind has tried to understand God, and we use a term like Trinity or triunity to try to understand God. But him being Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and revealing himself in that way, that's what God has chosen to do. So. Jewish people have a hard time because in Deuteronomy chapter 6 it says, 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You know, and they think, well, that's Jehovah, right? Well, yeah, but he revealed himself in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus says, before Abraham was born, I am, he was basically calling himself Jehovah, which he was. All right. Very good. I would like to ask a question. Are there any July birthdays? Any July birthdays? Angie is waving frantically back there, pointing at her husband. <clears throat> what day is it, the 30th? The 30th, okay. Anyone else with a July birthday? I guess Larry's it. We'll sing for Larry. Let's sing. Happy birthday. not here to sing that today. All right. <clears throat> All right. Any anniversary? Anybody have an anniversary in July? No? Oh, wait a minute. The, the D'Angelo's have a birth, an anniversary. When's your anniversary? 32. Seems like 31st. It's the 25th. The 25th, coming up. I mean, and, 25th of July. Right. And it's your 32nd or 33rd? Okay, let's figure out what year were you married? Do you remember that, Bill? I'll put you on the spot. Do you remember what year you were married? What? 32. 32. It's, it's going to be 32, Amy? Yeah. He got it. All right. It seems like 33 or 34 for him. Let's sing happy anniversary to Bill and Amy then, can we? Thank you, Stella. All right. Okay. Um, if you want to see the service again, uh, you can do one of two ways. You can either go and find Larry Hagerman's name on YouTube in the afternoon, 5 o'clock or later, or you can give me your, at, your email address, and I will put you on a list and send out the link later in the evening. So. I know one person, Gene, looks at it every week. So, that's why Clarence sits in the front row. That's why Clarence sits in the front row. That's right. <laughs> but I know there's several other people too. That's good. Okay. Uh, we have our Bible study on Thursday mornings at 10. We're doing 1 Corinthians. You're welcome to come right there in the library. Any other announcements today that need to be made? All right, so uh, I have a question for you as we begin. We're going to turn our hearts to the Lord. Uh, before I read the opening scripture, has anybody ever been caught in quicksand? You have been caught in quicksand? Well, it wasn't actually quicksand. It was at a sand wash, if you know what that okay. is, where they clean. Okay. And there were sections of it near the water pond that was like quicksand. And we used to think that it was fun to run across and see who got sucked in and who didn't. <laughs> Did you lose any shoes? Oh, many, yes. We lo many people lost many shoes. Yeah. And, my, and my sister, my youngest sister, she got caught in it and it sucked her down. She was a tiny little thing at the time. So I just grabbed her and I pulled her out, but she was covered with all of this yuck all over her. So we had left the ballpark where my father was coaching the ball team, and he told us not to go in there. <laughs> so as obedient children, we quickly rushed back. <laughs> but my sister was covered with us up, and my father knew what had happened to her as soon as he saw her. He gave her a licking you wouldn't believe. He goes, don't you ever go down there again. Of course we did. Of course, we yeah. We were obedient children. Okay. That's my quick answer. All right, so... Let's read our, uh, our opening scripture today and see if it sounds like someone 
had an experience like your sister, okay? Listen to what the psalmist said. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Does that sound like a, a quicksand rescue? Yeah. yeah. God brought me out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet on a rock. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you today for this opportunity to come and meet together with you. We rejoice, God, in the opportunities we have to worship and adore you. And so we come today with hearts uh, willing and, and ready to exalt you and praise you. And just as the psalmist gave that testimony about what you did in bringing him out of the miry clay and setting his feet on a rock, God, you have done that to us. We, we are lost without you. We're, we're in the quicksand and can't get out. And there has to be someone outside of the sand that can pull us out, and you have done it, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you've put a new song in our, heart, in our mouth, a song of praise to our God. And so we praise you today. And we pray, Lord God, as we consider your word, that you would encourage us, uh, enlighten us, and strengthen us, God, to walk with you in the obedience of faith. Bless this time together, then. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, our opening hymn, number 221. Uh, number 221, Charles Wesley hymn, and can it be? Let's sing the three verses of this song. Let's stand. Let's stand as we sing.
Thank you for that good singing. Greet two or three other people with God's peace before you're seated today. All right, so let's turn to number 81. Number 81. Glory to his name. And would you play through this one time? I'm not sure if they know it.
right, let's turn to the back of our hymnal. We're going to do responsive reading number 545. Number 545 is entitled, God's Goodness. 545. I'll read the fine print and you can respond together in the bold print. <clears throat> number 545. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord has righteousness and judgment for all our He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Our Father, his children, so the Lord them fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, he saves us the rest, as the flower of the field, so we flourish. For the wind passeth, passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place whereof shall know it no more. To such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of the dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. God bless the reading of his word. All right, one more hymn, number 49. Number 49, it's entitled, Abide With Me. Let's sing the verses of this song.
Thank you for that good singing. Gordon's going to come and now sing for us. Uh, the song is entitled, I'll Be Listening. We have an opportunity to uh, lift our requests before the Lord. Um, there are several names in the bulletin there listed. Uh, I actually had your brother Tony in there, but you're telling me Tony's doing better? I could ask you or Bill, I guess. He's doing, yeah, he's doing better. He's still got congestion, but uh, like I said, he's going back to work. Tomorrow. Okay. If you call babysit grandchildren work. <laughs> it's work. Well. Did you already said he's going to do? He's got to go back to his job of babysitting his grandchild. Yeah, okay. All right, any other uh, updates or other requests that we have today? Yes, Amy. <coughs> And her name is? Jenny. Jenny. Okay. Amy's sister, Jenny. Anyone else?
We'll pray for the Wellmans too as they travel tomorrow. Yeah. All right, let's turn to God in prayer, can we? Father in heaven, we come before you in Jesus' name. We thank you for the privilege of prayer. And Lord, we look to you today. We look to you for grace and strength. We recognize that you are the God who hears our prayers and answers them according to your will. And Lord, we have lifted these requests many times, but we would pray today specifically for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray that you would be working in the midst of the conflict that's going on there. Uh, we pray for what's going on in, in um, the Ukraine as well. God, that you would work in the midst of that conflict. Lord, I would pray today for uh, Jenny, uh, for Amy's sister who's having issues. We pray, Lord God, that you would touch her life, and I pray that you would give her strength. If you be your will, that you would touch her and heal her, God. Today, I want to pray for uh, Bob and Cheryl as they plan to return back to Indiana. We pray that you give them journey mercies as they travel tomorrow and in the coming days. Lord, for other requests today, we would pray for our nation. We pray that uh, there may be, uh, uh, there is, Lord, a need for us to have reformation and revival in our, con in our land. And we pray, Lord God, that you would bring us to a place of needing you. God, I, I pray that in the midst of this season when it's so easy to be on one side of a political fence or another, I pray, Lord God, that you would bring unity in our country and that you would bring about oneness of purpose. Lord God, I pray today also for the spiritual, uh, the spiritual temperature of our country, that we may be finding ourselves turning to you as the only hope of our life. May we find in God a refuge and a strength, a very present help in trouble. And Lord, for those who are in sick today, we would pray for them. Uh, you, we've prayed for these requests before for El, uh, Ursoy Ali, for John D'Angelo, for his brother Tony. We pray for them that you give them strength. For his son John, that his heart would be turned to you. We pray for Dottie's sister, uh, Dottie, rather, Susan's sister, who has this, these, this heart condition. We pray that you would minister to her, <clears throat> especially as. Susan is in the idea, has the idea that her sister is in her last days. I pray that, that Dottie may turn her heart and life over to Jesus. For Jim Grimm today, we pray. For Bob and Donna Hartman, we're thankful for Donna being here today. Thank you for what you've done in Darlene Hayes' life. We pray your continued touch on her. For Sherry, as she deals with this rheumatoid arthritis, I pray that you would strengthen her. I pray that you would give her relief. Touch her body, Lord. Thank you for the good report about Trisha's son, John, uh, Justin. Uh, I pray you bless him, continue to help him, Lord, uh, to live in victory over these things that he has so much trouble with, with addiction. Thank you that Bob is here today, Bob Kanake. We pray you continue to touch him with his issues with his heart and his circulation. Strengthen him day by day. For Shirley and Leland, we pray for them today as well. Give them strength and healing. For Elaine Longjohn, Lord, continue to help her as she recovers from her stroke, as well as Solomon the Miller as he is going through that same thing. For Dolores today, Lord, we pray for her as she continues to struggle and to recover from that broken femur. Bless her today. For Shelley, Lord, who heard uh, reports this last week, we pray that you give her wisdom as she continues to fight this cancer in her body. For the Mortons, we pray for both Gary and Karen, Lord, as they face his with back issues and her with the vertigo. Bless them today. For Dan Reisner, we pray for his eyesight. Uh, for Jimmy Rose with his COPD. For Pastor Phillips, we're thankful for him. Continue to strengthen him. For Richard Scarborough, uh, my son-in-law's, my son's father-in-law, we pray for him as he is recovering from this fluid being removed from his lungs. For Frank uh, with his heart surgery, for Elaine Tinsley, God, we pray for her living conditions. We pray your comfort to Marilyn Wilson and her family as she lost her husband this spring. We pray for Dennis and Stella. Thank you that Stella's here today. I pray for her as she uh, works together with her husband in helping him in all the things he faces, especially with the dementia. Uh, Lord, I pray for her with her own health issues that you would touch her. And for Woody and Lisa today, we pray for them Strengthen them, God, as Woody continues to fight this cancer and as Lisa continues to be, recover from her foot surgery. Lord God, for those who are uh, naming the name of Jesus, for those who are soldiers in Christ's army, we pray, Lord God, that you'd give them boldness, courage, and comfort. Thank you now, Lord, 
for all these requests, we lift these before you. We pray for uh, Clayton Riggs, too, who has this prostate cancer, for Jerry uh, Cassandra struggling with dementia, and for Howard and, and Helen Riley as well. Bless them and what they face. Thank you now. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's pray our prayer response together. Thank you for your offering today. Let's sing our doxology together. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to turn with me to the book of 2 Timothy. It's Paul's second epistle to Timothy, and uh, it's chapter 2. And I'm just going to be reading verses 1 and 2 of chapter 2 as uh, a point of takeoff for this message. If you have your bulletins on the back side there in the blueprint is my sermon outline. It's entitled, The Art of Disciple Making. This isn't a, a thesis on thesis statement on it, but it's more like an overview of what we're doing here. So let's read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Paul is writing to Timothy, and here's what he says. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you today for your word, and we pray your blessing upon your word today. May it strengthen our hearts, and may we once again see our call to be people of God who are interested in others and receiving from others as well. Thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, there are dad jokes, and then there are church jokes. I'm not sure which ones are worse. So let's try this one here. Um, there was a, a, a couple of people that were asking around, asking, uh, do you know anybody who builds a boat? And somebody said, yeah, we know a guy. No. <laughs> Here's another one. Uh, a, real estate, a, real estate, uh, a real estate agent was taking Daniel around to look at houses, and you know what he said to him? I'd like to have a house without a den. <laughs> I know, they're groaners. They're groaners, aren't they? Hey, have you ever heard this statement before? Don't keep the faith, but pass it on. Have you heard that statement before? Don't keep the faith, but pass it on. Well, I like to actually modify that a little bit, and that's the basis of my outline. I would like to say this. Keep the faith, and pass it on. Amen. Keep the faith and pass it on. I, I did a, a um, youth Bible camp one year, and I had this little uh, thing we did with our hands. We went like this. Keep the faith like in our heart. Keep the faith and pass it on. So if you did that to your neighbor, you'd be keeping the faith, and then you'd be touching fingers together, right? Keep the faith and pass it on. So let's talk about that today in, in this context of the passage of Scripture. Number one in my outline is then to keep the faith. Look what Paul says in verse one of our text. You, therefore, my son. Now, Paul is not writing to his literal son, and we're going to talk about it a little later, but his son in the faith was this Timothy. Timothy was a younger man and, Tim and was trained by Paul, and he is giving him an encouragement now, if you know anything about 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy is basically Paul's last will and testament. We think it was the last thing he wrote maybe not many months before he himself uh, left this earth because he was in prison. And so he writes to Timothy, he says, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in 
Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Uh, to be strong. Later on in this passage, we didn't read the, come, the future verses, but it talks about enduring hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, about being involved in warfare, about being an athlete that competes according to the prize, and then a farmer that does his work. All those kind of people are people that work hard, whether you're a soldier, whether you're an athlete, whether you're a farmer. And Paul says to Timothy here, be strong. Now, it's not a word that's not used in other places. In fact, in both Hebrew and in uh, Greek, the, the, the word is used. Uh, if you went back to the book of Joshua, when God spoke to Joshua, Joshua said, or God said to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous, you know. Fear not, for I'll, behold, I'll be with you wherever you go. Paul, later on in the book of Ephesians, says this, he says, be strong, uh, be strong in the grace that, well, this says, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. But let me just read that passage to you from, from uh, sorry, Ephesians chapter 6, where he's talking about putting on the armor of God. Sorry. He says in verse 10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the full armor of God. So here we see the same word to Timothy, be strong. And what should he be strong in? He should be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. It is something that we receive. Grace is a gift from God. And Paul wants him to be strong in that grace that comes from Jesus Christ. The Christian life is not a life of ease. You shouldn't ever pray for an easy life. You should pray for strength to face whatever you have coming before you. And Paul encourages Timothy to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The second thing he says is, and I put this in this way, to listen to the voice of truth. Listen to what verse 2 says, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. The things you have heard from me. So I, I can imagine that Timothy went along with Paul on missionary journeys, and he probably heard Paul preach a few times. It's kind of like what my children have to endure every week. They've been with me for a long time. They've probably heard everything I've said more than once. And certainly maybe Timothy had the same idea, that he heard Paul many times speak before many witnesses, and Paul says... The things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Timothy was the one receiving from Paul. He was receiving encouragement from Paul. Now it begs the question that I would ask of you. To whom are you listening? To whom are you listening? In other words, if I were to, if I were to ask you to do like a survey of a week in your life, who are the people that you're listening to? Whether it's on the television or on the radio or in the community, who are the people that are basically giving you information and feeding you what you have day by day? When we used to do computer work, there was something called G-I-G-O. Remember what that stood for? It meant this, garbage in, garbage out. You put garbage in, like you're writing a program for a computer, and you write it really badly, <laughs> then what comes out? Really bad program. In fact, oftentimes they have to make some kind of, you know, didn't they have a big uh, computer glitch this last week, and lots of things were affected by that? To whom are you listening? Do you have your radio on when you're in the car? Who do you listen to in the radio? Right? I'm not asking you to answer. I'm just asking you to think about it, right? Who is it that's putting input into your heart and life? In Paul's, in, in Paul's uh, situation with Timothy, Paul had Timothy's ear. And Paul was telling Timothy to listen to what he had taught. And what happens in our life, I think there's something that needs to happen, and that is when we listen to what we hear, we need to synthesize it. 
synthesize it. There are different definitions of synthesizing, but oftentimes in chemistry, when you take two different compounds and you put them together, something comes out of it. You remember doing chemistry in, in uh, high school, middle school? I, my favorite one was this. It was that you take uh, HCl, which was hydrochloric acid, and you take NaOH, which is a sodium hydroxide, and you put them together. It's an acid and a base. Now, this is all chemistry back then, remember? You put those two th together, a, a base and an acid, and when you put them through an uh, actual, uh, you have to use a catalyst, but when you put it through, what comes out? You know what comes out from there? What comes out is H2O and NaCl. You know what NaCl is? That's salt. So an acid and a base, when you put them together, all of a sudden they neutralize each other and out comes something neutral like water and salt. They synthesize together. But when we hear something, when we hear whatever word it is, if you have a, a Bible teacher on, on your radio when you're driving somewhere, and you listen to that Bible teacher and you listen to what he has to say or she has to say, and then you synthesize that, meaning you bring it into your life and you bring it together, the ideas, and they become a whole body of truth. Now, sometimes if it's something that's said what's, and you go, well, wait a minute, I'm not sure if that's true or not, then you examine the scriptures to see if it's true or not. But we synthesize it into our life and we say, this is something that I can take in. And Paul, certainly, as he spoke, Timothy was listening and Timothy was was basically synthesizing the words of Paul in his life. Part of keeping the faith is being fed with God's word. And Paul was feeding Timothy with the word of God and with the truth of the scriptures. And so Timothy was listening to the voice of truth. So is that it? We just simply have to be strong and then take it in? You know the people that take in lots and lots of food and never exercise? You know what happens to those kind of people? No offense to anybody here, right? But our, our, our middle size or our middle area gets wider. Maybe our backside gets a little wider too. You know what I'm saying? We don't just keep the faith, but we also pass it on. So number two is this, and pass it on. Uh, I put this, what you have received, obey. What you have received, obey. Um, I was just watching uh, the newest season of The Chosen. Any of you guys watch The Chosen? You know what I'm talking about? It's a story about Jesus and about his disciples. And one of the, one of the great lessons was, there was this ongoing kind of dispute between two of his disciples. It was Peter and Matthew. And Jesus is talking to Peter, and Peter in that famous story says, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother? Up to seven times? Remember what Jesus said? Not seven times, but 70 times seven. And there's a glorious, there's a glorious scene in that, in that thing where all of a sudden... Peter walks up to Matthew and gives him this great big hug, and he says, I forgive you. Now, what had Peter done? Now, that's just an, obviously uh, not necessarily a true statement or a true story, but it's an illustration of the truth of Jesus. What? When Jesus said, when your brother sins against you, you forgive him. Up to 70 times 7 and how do you take that teaching? You just go, well, that's good for other people, but it's not good for me. <laughs> no, you synthesize it when you say, that applies to my life. There are people that have done me wrong. I need to forgive them. I need to forgive them. And so when you hear the voice of truth, when you hear truth, what you've received, you obey. You walk in the obedience of faith. But that's not the only thing you do. You live that out. Certainly, Paul, in his life, before Timothy, had to live out 
that same faith that he was preaching. And Paul was illustrating that to Timothy. In the book of Philippians, Paul says, whatever you've seen and heard and watched me do, do those things and the God of peace will be with you. So Paul was not only preaching it, but he was living it, right? The old adage is, preacher, you know, practice what you preach. That's what Paul was doing. So whatever we receive, then we, o- we obey. But not only do we obey it, the, other, the second part of my outline here in 2B is whatever you have received, you commit to other or to another believer. Listen to what this says in verse 2 again. Paul says, And the things you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men. Now, it could be women, too. Paul's not being, you know, sexist here. He's just simply saying, Timothy, you have an opportunity to hear what I've preached to you. You've heard what I've said to other people. I hope that it's brought a a difference in your life. You synthesize it in your life, and then you tell others that same thing. You commit it to another person. Now, I use the illustration, I think I've mentioned these before, but I have three names there in this outline. The first one is a man named Barnabas. You guys remember Barnabas? If you don't have your Bibles, I'm just going to turn to these passages. Uh, it's, the first one is uh, in Acts chapter 9. And in Acts chapter 9 is when Paul was converted from his way of persecuting the church He was converted on the road to Damascus, and then Ananias met him. The scales fell off. And the Bible says he began to immediately preach Jesus. But not long after that, in verse 26 of chapter 9, it says, uh, sorry, chapter 26, uh, verse 26 says, And when Paul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. Can you imagine the uh, hesitancy on the part of the church going like, wait a minute, this, his name's Saul? Uh, no, nah, not so fast. I know what he's been doing. He's probably just trying to get in, deceive us. And so they wouldn't let him into the church. But what happened in verse 27? But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles And he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Who was Barnabas? Barnabas was one that believed Paul and saw what had happened to Paul and he probably discipled Paul. And when the church wasn't willing to accept Paul, Barnabas said, no, no, I I can vouch for him. I can vouch for him. And you get later in the book of Acts in chapter 13, and the Holy Spirit calls for the first missionary journey, and it says that the Holy Spirit said, Set apart unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work that I have before them. You notice whose name was first? Barnabas and Saul. And you go later on in the book of Acts, you know what? It becomes Paul and Barnabas. But initially, Barnabas was, in essence, the discipler, and Paul might have been his disciple. Now, the second name here is the name Apollos. And if you've been with us at all, and uh, uh, we've been studying the book of 1 Timothy, and uh, Paul begins to talk about people, well, I'm of Paul, and I'm of Paulus, I'm of Cephas, I'm of Christ. People were divided. And then Paul says about, about himself and about Apollos, In chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, he says this, For who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one? I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So Paul was just another person in the ministry of of the church in Corinth. Paul was the one that started the church. He planted it. But Apollos was the one that came along after Paul. Paul, uh, Apollos was the came after Paul and continued to grow the church. Now the third one is 
in Timothy. And we already, we already read this passage in 2 Timothy where Paul calls him my son. But listen to what he says about Timothy in the book of Philippians chapter 2. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I may also be encouraged when I hear your state. For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, but not the things which are of Christ Jesus. But you know his proven character, that he, as a son with his father he served with me in the gospel. Now why did I use those three names? Well, I think that oftentimes when we consider being a, a disciple maker, that the process of being a disciple, a disciple is simply someone who follows another. We talk about in the Gospels that there, the disciples were the men who left everything and followed Jesus for three and a half years. But in the present day, not only are we apostles, or rather disciples of Jesus Christ, but we can be disciples of one another. And that is oftentimes we can have people in different relationships with us. So as I think of Paul, the first person I think of is of Barnabas, that Barnabas was like above Paul and was ministering into Paul's life. He was speaking into Paul's life. And Paul was the recipient of someone above him. But then the second person in relation to Paul is Apollos. And Apollos and Paul are like co-workers together. In the, church that, in, the, in the church of Corinth, they were ones that worked in the same church. Maybe he was the first pastor and Apollos was the second. And so they were like equal with one another and maybe interacted between each other and encouraged one another in the faith. But then there's the third relation, and Paul's relation was to Timothy. And how, what was Paul's relation to Timothy? He wasn't like Barnabas, where he was, in essence, looking up to Barnabas. He wasn't like Apollos, where he was side by side with Apollos. Paul, in essence, was like above Timothy. And Timothy was the recipient of Paul's teaching. So how does that apply to you? Well, in our life, I believe God would want us to have someone like Barnabas and some like Apollos, someone like Apollos and someone like Timothy in our life. That is that God brings into our life someone that we learn from, someone who may, may be uh, more mature, in having long, lived long with Jesus, longer than I have with Jesus. And I can learn something from him or her. And then there's my brother in Christ who is someone who is equal with me and we can share and encourage one another in the faith. And then thirdly, God may bring into my life someone, and it doesn't necessarily have to be someone younger, but someone younger in the faith who needs my encouragement, my, my teaching to bring them up and mature in Christ. Uh, my father, my, my name, my whole name is Jonathan David Blickstead, and my middle name was given to me because uh, David was one of my father's best friends in the ministry. David Longauger was a pastor, uh, but he and my father, he and his wife and my parents went to Japan together, and they served in Japan together. And uh, Pastor Longauger told this story. He said, when I first got to Japan, I began praying, God, send somebody that I can disciple. Send somebody so that I can disciple them. And he said, I first got there, and when I first got there, there was this, this like 17-year-old kid. He was just like a 17-year-old, you know? He was kind of like bothersome. He kept bothering him kept bothering me, basically was trying to get the kid out of his way. Until all of a sudden one day he said, it dawned on me that I'd ask God for someone to minister to and the disciple, that was the kid, a 17 year old. You know what? It's been many years, my parents were missionaries in the 50s. That man, that 17 year old was a long time member and a longtime leader in the church. Pastor Longauger finally had the, the light go on in his head and he began to minister to that young man. 
That man was like his Timothy. So I would ask you the question, based on those three names, do you have a Barnabas in your life? Do you have an Apollos in your life? Do you have a Timothy in your life? You see, Paul said, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, he said, And the things you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men. What you have received, you give to somebody else. You train them in the things that you have been trained in, so that they can walk with Jesus too. And it doesn't just stop there. You know what happens? Look at the rest of the verse. I'll read verse two again. And the things you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You hear the multiplicity of that ministry? that I am faithful in hearing what God has to give to me through who, whatever means I'm hearing God's word. And then I pass it on to another person, but not that it just ends with him or her. I pass it on to them so that they can pass it on to someone else. And it goes on and on and on. Have you heard the, uh, this is a mathematical term. If you said, um, I started today, and for one particular year, I simply ministered to one other person and brought them to Jesus Christ. And then in that next year, I released that person to go minister to another person, and then I would continue on and do the same thing in the second year. So in the first year, there would be only two that were believers. Now, this is understanding there were many more than thus, but if this were all there were in the world. And then the second year, there would be four. And the next year, there would be eight. Do you get the multiplicity? Do you know that the entire eight billion people in the world would be saved within 40 years? So I believe that Jesus Christ calls us, he calls us to be faithful, to keep the faith, and to pass it on. That we receive, and hopefully we are listening to the right things during the week, and we're receiving from someone who is above us like a Barnabas. But then maybe we should pray that God would send us a Timothy that we can minister to and bring them in the faith and commit what we have heard and learned so that they can teach others also. Train them to continue to pass it on. Let's read the conclusion together, can we? God has called us into fellowship with himself. He has placed in our path those who can help us along the way and others we can help in their walk. As we are involved in disciple-making, God uses that for the sake of mutual encouragement and exhortation. I need to say one thing. Do we need encouragement? In the Christian life, do we need encouragement? And sometimes do we need to be exhorted? Exhorted means like you need to hear this. You don't want to hear this, but you need to hear this. And when we are involved in disciple making, we have opportunity to share and encourage one another in the faith and even to exhort one another. God bless us as we, like Timothy, are strong in the faith, but strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and commit ourselves to hearing and passing on to others what God has given to us. God bless you in the art of disciple making. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word today. I pray that it might encourage us to be 
not only disciples following you, but, Lord, learning how we can affect other people's lives for the kingdom of God. Thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, is there anyone who would like to give a testimony today or a comment about the message? Yes, John. There's certain people uh, that I meet every morning. They're just passing by, but I know they're believers. And we speak briefly and encourage each other every morning. And uh, that's what every believer should be doing every day. Amen. Anyone else? All right, let's stand together. As we go from here today, let us be disciples and let us make disciples. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you for coming today. God bless you.